It is good to be back in the hall for a change. It's good to see some old familiar faces. I was telling Tim as I walked in, I hadn't seen him in so long. I asked why, man. I said, the records are not that bad. How long have I seen you? Yeah, he some excuse, but I understand. <laughs>
that this final trip, this final journey to Jerusalem was not a good time. There had there was a mixture of foreboding. There was a mixture of concern. The disciples themselves, uh, 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 Jesus had told them in the midst of this trip that, that uh, he would be turned over to, to, the, to the chief priests and the Pharisees. And they would turn him over to the Gentiles. And that he would be spat upon, he would be mocked, he would be scourged, and he would be crucified and arise on the third day. And they just didn't get it. Three times, at least three times, three times that are specified in the scripture, Jesus plainly told them what he was going to experience on his last trip. And they just didn't get it. And we, we can't take it. Just, I, I can't complain. I, if I was there, I wouldn't get it either. Because in Mark's journey, Mark's account, uh, uh, the main event before he gets, they start talking about this trip, was transfiguration. And imagine if you're Peter, John, and James, and you're on the Mount of Transfiguration, and you hear the very voice of God mm. telling you, this is my beloved son. Imagine being on the Mount of Transfiguration and seeing that. And a month or so later, Jesus is telling you, I'm going to be spat on, I'm going to be mocked, I'm going to be beaten, I'm going to be crucified. I would have a problem believing that. Mm. I would have a problem with that. So I'm not surprised that his disciples just didn't get it. Because it wouldn't make sense to me. But brother, thanks be to God, I am where I am here and now. And I can see and understand but our God and our Savior has come to us. So yes, I'm celebrating his departure because I know the importance of his honor. Now let's look at one other thing I want to say before I read my scripture. Not only do we see him on this final journey, not only is it a difficult trip to him, not only is it confusing to the disciples and difficult for Christ because he knows what waits at the end of his journey. In spite of all of that, breath, he still has the time for us. He still has the time to preach. He still has the time to teach. He still has the time to heal the sick. He still has the time to give hope to sinners on this trip that is so foreboding. He's never too preoccupied with what he has to go through. He's never too concerned about, well, about what he has to deal with. And you know, brother, I tell you, you know, I was reading an article just this week where they, they found, I guess, some galaxy. I guess it's the most distant galaxy in the universe that they've found, been able to locate. And it's like, what, 13 and a half billion light years away. Mm. Now imagine your Lord and Savior sitting on his throne, ruling his entire creation. Mm. And is it at least 13 and a half billion light years Why? Light travels, what, 186,000 miles per second? Mm -hmm. A light year, the distance a year, uh, the distance light can travel in a year? Right, right. And we're talking about uh, 13 and a half billion light years? That's, that's a lot of acres. <laughs> that's a lot of acres. And you're governing all of that. You're ruling all of that. All of your creation. But you know he's still he's not too busy for John Graham. He's not too busy for you, Rose. He's not too busy for you, honey. With every little thing we have to deal with in our lives, he still has the time to deal with it. When we have a problem, he has the time to walk with us through it. Amen. In spite of Amen. managing the entire universe, which is continuing to expand and expand. 
comes from Luke's account. I'm going to leave, read Luke verses, uh, chapter 19, verses 28, all the way through 40. So don't nod off. <laughs> After Jesus had told, had said this, he went on ahead, going up to Jerusalem. Verse 29, as he approached Bethpage and Bethany at the hill called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and as you enter it, you will find a coat there, which has never been written, which no one has ever written. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you why you are untying it, tell them the Lord needs it. Verse 32. Those who were sent went on ahead, and found it just as, G as, 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 just as Jesus had told them. As they were untying the coat, his owners asked him, Why are you untying the coat? They replied, The Lord needs it. Verse 35, They brought it to Jesus, threw their cloaks on the coat, and put, it, put Jesus on it. Verse 36, And as he went along, the people spread their coats on the road. When he came near the place where the road goes down to the Mount of Olives, the whole crowd of disciples began to joyfully praise God in loud voices all the miracles they had seen. Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. Jesus said, I tell you, if you keep your faith, keep quiet, the stones themselves will cry out. We're talking about celebration. Mm -hmm. Glory be to God. But let's continue on. In verse 41, as he approached Jerusalem and saw the city, he wept over it. And he said, if you, even you, had only known this day what would Brethren, do we know what would bring us peace today? Jesus said, you, your great city, if you only knew what would bring you peace. The days will come upon come when there are, your enemies will build an embankment against you and encircle you and hem you in on every side. They will dash you to the ground, you and the children within your walls. They will not leave one stone upon another. Why? Because you did not recognize the time of God's coming to you. Brother, that was 2,000 years ago. Nothing's changed. Think of the things, you know, I'm, I'm a history buff. You know, I will to tell you, I do, you know, I, don't get me anywhere near a battlefield. I'll be there all day walking around. She'll be sitting there in the car with us, praying and hoping to God. Right? <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> but brethren, think about the things the Jews went through. Think about what they suffered during the World War II. Think about the way the world, the condition of the world is in today. Think about, brethren, what would bring us peace. And what we as human beings that have to deal with all because we do not recognize God's coming to us. Brother, we are blessed. The few of us here today, we are blessed. Because we know what will bring us peace. Oh, that's a blessing. Jesus wept because of it. But you know, brother, it's going on with our story. You know, I think it's, it, 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 it's, it's very interesting as we look at this account. And Luke began by saying, after he has said this, and being nosy as we all are, you can't have a one after he said what? Did he say something that pertains to what we're talking about today? Did he say something that is very important to us? 
something that we need to be to remind ourselves of. I think he has said what? We were talking about celebrating this party. We were talking about his triumphant entry into the city of Jerusalem. We were talking about his last journey. Luke said that after he has said this, so you can't help but turn the page in your Bible, go to the chapter in front of it, or the passage in front of it, and see what did he say. Right? And what did he say? Keep coming back. No, he's not right now. Hey, Samuel's with me, boy. I appreciate this. He keeps me on my toes. <laughs> Brethren, he gave him the parable of the pounds. Or the parable of the ten minutes. And he did so. Why? Because they were near Jerusalem. And because the people expected the kingdom. Like yesterday. They expected the kingdom to be set up now. And Jesus knew the hearts of the people, even though they worshiped and praised him, he knew their hearts. He knew what they wanted. They wanted a ruler. A ruler that would inspire them, would uplift them, help them to revolt and overthrow Roman domination. They wanted that now. But that is not what Jesus was there. And it was important for them, for his disciples, to know what was going to happen. And so he gave them this parable. That's what he had said. And, and, and it's, it's an important parable that we're all familiar with it, right? It, it, now it's similar. Don't confuse it with the parable of the talent. But they're similar. But they're different. The parable of the talents, the, 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 uh, the rich man went away, right? Mm -hmm. and, and he gave his servants his property. But he gave them different amounts, didn't he, according to their ability. But in the parable of the pounds or the parable of the ten minutes, you have a nobleman, not just a rich man, a noble, that goes to a distant country to be made a king. And he called his servants, his ten servants, and he gave them all the same amount, the same thing, one minute. Now, minute was basically the equivalent of, of, of three months' wages in those days. He told them to put it to good use while I'm gone. Work with it while I'm gone. And while he was gone, to receive the king, the, uh, the kingship, I should say. The subjects, not the ten servants, but the other subjects, sent word that they didn't want to be bothered with him. They don't want him to come back and rule over them. Eventually, when he returns, he calls the ten servants to his presence, right? And asks them, show me what you did with the, the minute that I gave you. And one said, oh, I, I increased it, showed that I had increased it tenfold. Another had increased it fivefold. And, and, and so on and so on. But uh, some of them only did it. Basically gave them back the minute that he originally gave them, right? And he said, wicked servant. This is what I gave you. But they said, but hey, you know, I knew you was a hard man. I know that you, you, you like to gather what you didn't what you didn't sow. And so to be saved, I just hit mine on a rock. So he called him a wicked servant and he was very displeased. Those that did not, those subjects that did not want him to rule over them, they, they were executed. But he was displeased with those servants. Now, brethren, I tell you what, what I find that's important with this parable is that the, the, the great Jesus was already a king. He didn't have to go to receive a kingship. He was already a king, wasn't he? But still he went to a distant land. And he returned at a later date. Now, has Jesus returned to us, brethren? Not yet, has he? He has not returned yet, has he? So that tells me, brethren, that parable, that parable also applies to us today. But he still hasn't returned, has he? So my question then, brethren, and what each and every one of us should be asking ourselves, we talk about here about our Father's business, we should be asking ourselves, am I about my Father's business? Am I properly utilizing what he has given me to work towards the kingdom, toward his expansion? Am I doing his will? Am I being obedient? Am I being a good servant with what he has given me?
That applies to you and me because he still has a return. That applies to us all. We all have a part to play in his ministry. No. We all do. You don't have to agree with him, but I'm telling you, you do. And brother, we all do. And these ten servants, excuse me, these ten servants had a role to play. Now, as, as we get into the, the into the passage that we read, we next see that the Lord Luke tells us that as he approached Jerusalem, he sends two servants, two of his servants, two of the disciples to the next village. Right? He tells them to go and you will find a coat. Untie it, a coat that had never been written. Untie it and bring it back to which they did. Faithfully. Again, brother, has shown that even in even in his last days, even in the last days of his ministry, he gave his followers a part to play. Didn't he? He gave his people a part in it. Allow us to share in it. He sent these two disciples on an end. Now, to go to the next village. You will find a coat un that is bound, that is never been written, untie it and bring it back to me. Which they did. And the coat was there, just like he, he, he said it. You know, I can remember. <coughs> and I have to imagine, brother, think about these two disciples. And, and Luke doesn't tell us whether it was two of the original twelve or two of the, uh, or the uh, or other followers of the disciples. But it was those two. You know, I can remember back in the day when, uh, before I was even looking for a name, Mr. Armstrong was still alive. And, and, and uh, I, used, I had signed up for uh, security. And we would go up on, to Pasadena on the weekends and have a security shift. And uh, unlike some of the guys from Pasadena, <laughs> blessed to have the little cars and the scooters that came around. Everybody we out there in the cold walking at night. We were talking in the morning in February. I'm walking around with a flashlight up in Pasadena. But you know, I'll tell you, friend, in spite of it all, if there was something in, in your, in the, that occurred in your watch where you had to do something that related to, to Mr. Armstrong or Mr. Carr, something that you know, I think it, it might have been uh, of the least importance to them, but to me, whoo, man, I admit, how privileged I am to go get his trash. Let's go trash <laughs> how privileged I am to, to, to do this or that, whatever. What a great blessing it was. Well, it made you feel so excited, you know, so important, it didn't feel cold anymore. You know, it was so important. It made you feel so so imagine these two disciples go and get, going into to, to, to the next village to get a coat. And if they knew anything about the scriptures at all, they knew what, 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 what Johnny had, they knew the passage from Zechariah. And they knew that, hey, this is being a witness. I'm having to fulfill prophecy here. Mm -hmm. Because it was exactly the way Jesus had said, right? They went there, they found the boat. Jesus didn't tell them to go to the next town and look around until you can find a coat somewhere and bring it to me. He didn't tell them to go and, and, and there might be a coat. Let's pray on your way while you're walking that, that there's something there for me to ride on. He told them exactly what to, what, where to go. He told them exactly what to say. And he told them you would have to which is exactly what they did. Brethren, I'm telling you, our God, is, our Lord and Savior has given us a part to play in this ministry. He hasn't returned as he can, but we know he's coming. And just like he gave those two disciples a part to play in his final days, he's given us a part to play as well. Because whether we, whether we realize it or not, brother, there is a next village ahead somewhere. It could be at the gas station on the corner. It 
could be at your neighbor's house next door. He could be on your job. He could be at your doctor's office. There is a village ahead. And in that village, there is a coat that is bound. There is someone, brethren, that is bound up in their sin, that is bound up in problems, that is bound up in this life that we, our Lord and Savior, has given us the opportunity to help untie those bounds and lead that person back to Christ. There's a coat in every one of our lives. And it's, it's exactly where Jesus said it would be. We have to go there. We have to be willing to be about our God's business. We have to be willing to do exactly as he tells us to do. Because he said, I, he, he, he gives us, he will give us the words to say. We just have to be willing to use whatever we have. And he has given us all something. We have to just be willing to use whatever he has. There's a lot of coats out there, brother, that are bound, I'm telling you, that are bound to sin, that are bound to, 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 to trials, that are bound to weaknesses, that are bound to thoughts. A lot of coats out there need to be untied. They need to know what to give them peace this day. And you have a Lord and Savior. And he said he wants you to be about your father's business. So that's a question we each have to ask ourselves. Am I being about my father's business in a way that is pleasing and satisfying? Or am I behaving in a way that he will say and be served? That's up to you. He has given us the opportunity, and he will continue to give us an opportunity. We're never going to be too old, we're never going to be too sick, we're never going to be too immobile. My honey can't get around enough right now, but believe me, she can get about what she wants to. And I know that I got God that will heal that knee and will lift her up and will send her to that coat if she is willing to untie it and lead it back to Christ and point it to Christ. Just to But going on with Pharaoh, oh, all right, going on in the passage, they did exactly that. And they brought the coat back. And they put their clothes on it, with told by me, and put Jesus on it. You know, I, I, you know I, I love Westerns too. And I can remember every cowboy movie I ever seen. If you were riding, trying to ride a horse for the first time, you had a problem. You couldn't just go get on that horse, right? And two little two. You'll be on the ground, right? It had to be broken. It had to be broken. And so I couldn't help being nosy. I couldn't help but uh, go to YouTube and then on the internet and put in the question, asking them, you know, basically, what's required? To, uh, to break a donkey or to ride on to ride on for the first time. And I saw some videos where people get on them and boom, 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 the next thing you know they have to ride. But that wasn't the case with Christ. And I saw one video where a guy was training, telling you how to train a donkey. And he was saying that uh, donkeys, you know, they're very smart. They're very smart. And they, uh, they have a, a, a sense of uh, an ability to sense danger of threats. And if they're, they're sensing that uh, danger or that threat, they could be kind of different, stubborn, stiff-necked. But they said it, it's important that the animal trust the owner. The more they trust the owner, the more they feel that that owner, the owner is not going to harm them, the easier it is for them to be trained. The easier it is for them to be ridden. Jesus required an unbroken uh, 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 animal, a coat that had never been written. Brought to him. And it was. And he just got on it. That tells me, brethren, that not only, not only is it, is it, is it, is it important 
something to, to for us to do our part. That, that also shows me that it's important to have trust in our Lord and Savior. Yes, he could get on that donkey, that cold donkey, that had never been ridden without any problems. That tells me that animal had absolute trust in our Lord and Savior. And we have all seen pains and things where he's out in, in the midst of, of the of the wilderness or whatever, and birds come in the light, and light on his hand and everything. And that tells me, brother, that even, even the wild beasts of the field have trust in our Lord and Savior. It's sad that so many of us have problems with, with him, right? But even the beasts of the field trust him. And not only that, brother, it also tells me that 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 the animal, the coat, was basically you know you, you can say that he was a he was a new animal, right? A new coat. And I will say again, a difference in the gospels in the way they record it. In Matthew, you have both the coat and his mother. You have two brothers. And the, uh, the, the servants untie both of them, bring the coat and the mother back. But all the gospels seem to agree that he actually rode the coat. And, uh, the new. That introduces an, an aspect of newness to the story as well. Everything on this is new. That reminds me that, that uh, what my God tells us in Isaiah 43 is to behold, I'm doing a new thing. I'm dealing with you in a new way in Christ. God is dealing with each and every one of us in a new way. He's dealing with us through his grace, not the law. He's dealing with us in, in a way that 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 all mankind, all not just man, all creation is new. He died on the cross, was resurrected on the third day. His resurrection and his ushering in a new, a whole new aspect of newness in his creation. A whole new aspect of newness in the way God dealt with his entire creation. A newness in the way he deals with each and every one of us. Brethren, we are blessed. We are blessed. Our God, even and in his most difficult hour was concerned about you and me. Was concerned about us. Even in his most difficult situation, he had time for humanity. He had time for humanity. Even on the cross, he says what? Forgive them. They do not know what they do. He has concern for humanity. He has concern for each and every one of us, no matter how difficult, no matter how much of a problem we place on him, no matter how much pain and suffering we cause him. Is he concerned about himself? He's concerned about us. And he gets on the duck and run it out of time. And he gets on the duck. And he begins the journey down into the Jerusalem toward the city gates. And the, the disciples that they just get so they, they might have been concerned earlier to tell them what he had to go through, but by this time they were excited. Everybody was happy. You, you think it was New Year's Eve for everybody. Everybody was so thrilled, everybody was so excited. And brethren, if you knew the scriptures, and they did. They knew the prophecy of Zechariah. They knew that their king had come. They knew it was time to celebrate. But brother, what were they celebrating? They were celebrating his arrival. They were celebrating a leader that would come, that had come, that would lead them to overthrow the Roman yoke. And many of these same voices, brethren, that are praising him and praising God today 
two or three days down the road, it's going to be crying out what? Crucified. Crucified. This is not who we thought we was getting. This is not what, it, what I signed up for. Crucified. These, many of these same voices. That's why it's important to understand him and to celebrate his departure. His departure, brother, to, it, it, uh, it is through his departure that we're saved. It is through his shed blood on the cross. It is through his being it's placed in the tomb for three days. It is, for, it is through his resurrection that we are saved. We are saved and we celebrate his Next week, you know, I couldn't help myself when we were kids. Roll for tape. When we were kids, we'd know the little Easter egg candies you get together. Had the little marshmallow, the sugar marshmallow inside. Mm -hmm. You can still find them in the 99 cents. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only place I know where you can find them. And, and I sure would have got me up that. I prayed hard that I could find something. And found only one pack. <laughs> only one. It was a 99 cents. But I'm telling you, I'm thankful that I found something. And, and the hardest thing for me to do now in, my, in the world is to only eat two a day. Because <laughs> you pretty much just eating a handful of sugar, brother. Yeah. <laughs> but you only see them during this time. Of year. And I've learned to look for them because to me it's a part of my celebration. They're colorful, they're sweet, they're good. <laughs> but brethren, we can be thankful. We can be thankful. Because I'm, I'm thankful that I found some. So we can be thankful that our Lord and Savior cared enough. Because he knew what was at the end of that trip. But he cared enough. And Luke tells us that he resolutely, that means with determination, with commitment, said, I'm going to let me start this trip. I'm going to make this trip. And it wasn't easy. But you knew what awaited it. Yeah. But brethren, in spite of in spite of it all, he did make the trip. In spite of it all, he went to the cross. In spite of it all, he rose on the third day. In spite of it all, he ascended to back to the Father. In spite of it all. He dwells within each and every one of us as, I don't want to say sorry, but because I, I think about John Graham, and I know John Graham screws up a lot, but thanks be to God, brethren, I haven't screwed up too much that he has deserted me. He is still with me, and I can count on that. I can count on that. I can count on all of my sins being removed far from me. I can count on that as long as I have faith never going to turn his back. Mm -hmm. That's worth celebrating. So, I'm uh, sorry to say I only found one bag of eggs, so I can't tell you to go to the 99 cent store and pop it on a uh, laundry and, and, and walk in uh, Long Beach Boulevard and find something. But, give it a shot. That works well for me.